Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of our series where we take a look at how to read sits and stars. Today we are going to focus on how to interpret a star or standard terminal arrival route. So if you are new here be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button if you find this guide helpful. Now without further ado let's get right into it. Here we have an example of what you might get when you look up an arrival chart. Just like in the previous video, this particular example is a chart from Brussels airport in my home country Belgium. And for those of you who might not know, a star is basically a fixed route that takes you from the final waypoint of your flight plan to the first waypoint of your approach. So a star basically explains to you how to approach the airport in general. And then there's a dedicated approach chart to guide you all the way to the runway itself. We will be discussing those charts in the next video, so stay tuned for that as well. Just like last time, we are going to go over all the different information on this chart, and then at the end I'll give you a brief overview of how exactly you should interpret that info. So starting at the top again, we have the unique designation of the chart to make it easier to find and to verify you have the right procedure in front of you. This here is the specific type of chart you're using. In this case, it's an RNAV arrival, so it makes use of GPS waypoints. It says overlay here because there's another version of the same arrival chart that doesn't use RNAV, but instead relies on ground-based navigation, such as VORs and such. So this chart is basically a GPS version of that VOR arrival. Here we can see several names of the different arrivals. Most arrival charts have multiple routings on them, so this allows you to differentiate them from each other, as the names are also written next to the routes they represent. To the left we have some frequencies that you would use during an arrival if you were flying on VATSIM for example, and next to that is the airport elevation above sea level. Next up is some general information such as the unit of the barometric pressure that is used by ATC, and the transition level below that which in most cases during arrivals is decided by ATC, as it says right here. This here is an instruction for when you are being vectored by ATC to reduce your speed at a certain altitude or distance. You can find similar instructions for other airports in this section as well, so that's definitely something to look out for when flying online. In the middle we have the actual routing itself with a couple of altitude restrictions. Here you can see that there's a speed restriction at these two waypoints, which will always be marked in a purple-ish color. Next to the lines that represent your route, you can see that there's also an altitude written next to them. This I believe is the minimum altitude that you would want to descend to at that point. They are not quite the same as altitude restrictions as far as I'm aware, so I think they are more for the purpose of guiding you, but I could be wrong about that. Do correct me down in the comment section below if that's incorrect. Something else that you can see on this chart are holding patterns. These are used whenever there's a lot of traffic at an airport and some aircraft have to wait for some time before they can land. In that case, ATC will put them in one of these holding patterns. They might give you a specific instruction on how you should approach the waypoint where you will enter a holding pattern but if they don't, you are expected to use the predetermined heading and altitude noted on this chart. For example, at the Kirky waypoint, the inbound heading is 100 degrees, and you should hold there between 4000 feet and flight level 9 or 0, unless, of course, ATC tells you something else. Moving on to the lower right corner, we have a summary of the different routes with all of the waypoints, altitude and speed restrictions. And as you can see, there are a couple of numbers written next to the names as well. This is often done when there's too little room to put all of the information, so it's basically a reference to another section of the same chart where you can find the rest of the info. In this case, the rest of the info is right here. Finally, there's also some more info here that is very airport specific. So in case you are flying online once again, just give these boxes a quick read so you are aware of any airport specific information. That way you can score some good points with ADC as well. And that covers basically all the relevant information you can find on this chart, so let's go over what it all means in the grand scheme of things. Let's say for example you have been assigned the Arvel 7 Alpha arrival by ATC. 
you'll have to make sure that once you cross the Arval waypoint, which is your initial waypoint, that your speed is at a maximum of 250 knots. From there you are going to continue your descent via this route here, making sure you don't descend below flight level 9 or 0 before Akovi, and below flight level 70 before Kirky. Then from Kirky you are going to transition to the approach chart, which we'll discuss in the next part of this series. I hope all of this made sense and that you'll be able to understand these charts better from now on, but if there's something still unclear do let me know in the comment section below, I'm more than happy to help you out and to answer your questions. Be sure to go check out the next part as well if you enjoyed this tutorial, or go watch our video about departures if you haven't seen it yet, since I covered a lot of stuff in that video as well.